Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhina when I welcome you. In this video, uh, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 62. The title of the discourse is The Longer Advice to Rahula. Who was Rahula? Rahula was the son of Buddha who became a novice monk and in the Sangha. And uh, <coughs> this advice, it seems and what I have read is given when Rahula was uh, around 18 years old. So there was Middle Discourses 61 that we understood where Buddha gave him a, when he was very young, very quite young, like around 12 years old, where Buddha gave him some directions on not to speak lie and uh, how to be mindful of uh, intentions, speech and body. So That was like a basic guidance that Buddha was, gave him. You can check out my video. You can type MN61 in the search bar and it will come. So this is MN62, which is a longer advice and which is a much more kind of a higher uh, 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 training that Buddha has given because now Rahula is also uh, a bit uh, old and he can digest that uh, advice. So basically in this Buddha has explained the nature of elements about mindfulness of breathing and other objects of uh, meditation right? that Buddha has explained. So let us understand I am just sharing a kind of a summary. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it at your end, get your own insights. And don't forget to share your insights in the comment section. Okay, so let us start. So Buddha was in Savatthi. He robed, robed up in the morning and entered Savatthi. Uh, so then Buddha looked at... Uh, uh, Rahula also was accompanying the Buddha. Then Buddha looked back at Rahula and said, Rahula, uh, you should truly see any kind of form at all, past, future or present, internal or exterior, coarse or fine, inferior or superior, far or near, all form with right understanding. This is not mine. I am not this. This is not myself. Now the background to this was, and this is what is coming out in the commentaries is, that Buddha, so because Buddha looked very good, looked radiant, shining, well built, and uh, uh, Rahula, because maybe he was at this age of 18, and you know, this age was there when youth is there, and you know, attachment to form and body and all is there. So he admired Buddha's outer looks and also thought him to be similar to that of a Buddha. It's like a, 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 a son looks at his father and says that I, if my father is very handsome, I am also my handsome like that of a father. So maybe this prompted Buddha to give this kind of a teaching to Rahula that Rahula see any kind of form with this right understanding. This is not me. This is not mine. I am not this. This is not myself. Right? So this is one thing. So then uh, Rahula questioned, only form, blessed one, only form, holy one. That means, are you saying only for form? Buddha said, no. Form, Rahula, as well as feelings, perceptions, choices and consciousness. So there are total five aggregates from which we have been built. So Buddha said, there is no permanent self. There is no self. It's basically the self itself when you look at it as a mic under a microscope. It's basically composed of five things. Form, feelings, perceptions, choices and consciousness. Five things. So, And all these are changing. All these are changing every moment. So there is like this illusion that you have of a permanent self. Whereas all these five things are changing. It's like a fan which, is, which has five blades. And this fan is running at top speed. It gives an illusion of a self. Uh, that there is a proper fan. You know, at top speed when it runs, there is like you can see the... Like a, f a fan, but it is actually just the various blades, it is just running. So, then Rahula thought, because Rahula got this knowledge, he thought, why, who would go to the village for arms after being advised directly to the Buddha? That means he did not want to eat for the day. He, turning back, he sat, sat cross-legged at the root of a certain tree, setting his body straight and establishing mindfulness, right? He sat, established mindfulness and uh, started meditation. Then Sariputta came. Sariputta was one of the chief disciples of the Buddha. And he saw him. And Sariputta was the disciple who was like uh, assigned to take care of uh, Rahula's everything. That means his teaching, his instruction, his progress. Because Buddha had to take care of a lot of other things. Sariputta usually took care of those things for uh, Rahula. So Sariputta said, Rahula developed mindfulness of breathing. When mindfulness of breathing is developed and cultivated, it's very fruitful and beneficial. So then, in the la late afternoon, Rahul came out of the retreat, went up to the Buddha 
and asked Buddha, Sir, how is mindful of, mindfulness of breathing developed and cultivated? That means he asked about the, how, the mindfulness of breathing, how to cultivate. Now here what happens is that Buddha instead of teaching directly mindfulness of breathing, he first spoke about the elements, the very the five elements, earth, water, fire, air. These elements, he started and explaining these elements. So it's not clear why Buddha said this. Maybe he thought that he need to give that background to, to Rahula before he moves to the mindfulness of breathing. He moves to mindfulness of breathing towards the end of the discourse. But first he explained the elements. So it's a very, very important, uh, you know, this discourse, friends, that we know what Buddha is talking about, the elements. It's all a play of elements, right? It's all a play of these very elements, the five elements. So let us understand that, right? The five elements, I'm just, just sharing a summary kind of thing. So the first Buddha said, Rahul, the interior element, earth element is said to be anything hard and solid. So which includes, now examples, head, hair, body hair, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinews, bones, bone marrow, kidney, heart, liver, diaphragm, spleen, lungs, intestines, mesentery, undigested food, feces, anything hard, solid, appropriated. Right? That is called the earth element. The interior earth element and exterior earth element are just the earth element. This should be truly seen with the right understanding. This is not mine. I am not this. This is not myself. So this is basically the thing that this is not mine. This is like what they do as a practice, no? Monks, neti neti. This is not me. This is not me. So, saying, you know, negatively, right? This is not me. This is not me. Otherwise, what is happening is I generally get attached to, to my body, my mind, my feelings, outside objects. I keep attaching myself. This is my tendency that I have cultivated across many, many lives. My wrong image of a self, which is my body and which is my mind, there is, there is no body, there is no mind that is my own. It's just happening. If something is flowing, if something is not permanent, how can I call my own? I remember in one of the previous discourses where Buddha had a debate with Sakka on non-self. He said that one which is yours, you can control it. No. One which is yours, you have the control over it. Do you have a control over your body? So Sakka got stumped there and then. Sakka said, no, I don't have control over my body. My body is decaying. I do not have control over it. So similarly, Buddha said that anything you cannot, you don't have control, you cannot say this is my own. Right? This How deep is this? Right? So just think this is not me, this is not mine. Or another way you can say is that this is impermanent, this is changing. Every, so uh, essential idea is basically what I will say is the essential idea is to get rid of our attachment to body, mind, feelings, for me, mental formations, consciousness. We need to get rid of our attachments to all these things. So then water element. First is the earth element we discussed. Now come to water element. What is water element? Anything that is water, watery and appropriated. That is internal pertaining to the individual. Now examples. Bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tears, grease, saliva, snot, synovial fluid, urine. Anything that is water, watery or appropriated. Right? That is called the water element. Interior water element and then there is exterior water element that you see water outside. So both interior and exterior are water elements. What is fire element? Anything which is fire, fiery which includes warm and that which ages, that which heats you up when feverish, that which properly digests the food and drink or anything that is fire, fiery, right? that is fire element. Again, in all the things Buddha is saying, see it with the right view. This is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. This is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. Then what is air element? Anything that is air, airy. For example, winds that go up and down, winds in the belly or the bowels, winds that flow through the limbs, in breath, out breath. Anything that's air, airy. What is space element? Anything that is space, spacious. This includes ear canal, nostrils, mouth, space for swallowing, what is eaten and drunk, the space where it stays, the space for extreating it, from the nether regions. 
now buddha is saying to rahula on what to meditate so there are in all if you in the abhidhamma what i i can be wrong here also but what i have read off is that there are some 40 objects that a person can merit meditate a mendicant can meditate but here buddha is asking rahula because from you know the specific knowledge level what rahula is buddha is asking him to take certain meditations like meditate on the earth for in when you meditate like the earth pleasant and unpleasant contacts will not occupy your mind suppose they were to toss both clean and unclean things on this earth like faces urine spit pus and blood earth isn't horrified repelled and disgusted because of this in the same way meditate like this like the earth for when you meditate like the earth pleasant and unpleasant contacts will not occupy your mind so this is first meditation buddha is suggesting second meditate like water for when you meditate like water pleasant unpleasant contacts will not occupy suppose there was there were to wash both clean and unclean thing in the water like faces urine spit pus blood water isn't horrified then meditate like fire for for example fire was to burn both clean and unclean things like faces urine spit pus blood fire isn't horrified meditate the wind if wind were to blow on clean and unclean things like faces urine spit pus blood wind isn't horrified repelled it is equanimous right meditate like space just as space is not established anywhere in the same way meditate like space then buddha says says about meditate on love when you meditate on love any ill will will be given up this is very very important buddha is giving a clear correlation between what you meditate and what tendency you will give up right so this is basically the loving kindness meditation and it is very very good for getting rid of the hatred tendencies of hatred tendencies of anger i have a loving kindness meditation on this channel you can check that out guided loving kindness meditation and i will make meditations on all these things on the elements on the breathing i already have a guided breath awareness meditation then loving kindness i have then on other things whatever i find i will definitely make meditations so just give me some time so and you can check the meditations playlist on this channel for the whatever meditations that are there at when you are watching this video meditation on compassion when you meditate in compassion cruelty will be given up meditate on rejoicing when you meditate on rejoicing any discontent is given up meditate on equanimity for when you meditate on equanimity and repulsion will be given up meditate on ugliness what will be given up lust will be given up if you if, if you have lot of sensual desire and lust then you meditate on the ugliness meditate on impermanence so any i am kind of a tendency that i have a separate self i have a permanent self right this cosmic uh, 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 thing is permanent this will be given up then buddha comes to the meditation on breathing so it is not clear whether buddha wanted him to practice buddha wanted all of us to practice that and then come to breathing that is not clear this is a specific advice to rahula right now buddha came upon develop and in this discourse it is not even mentioned that you have to do this and then you meditate on breathing that is also not there so so let's not make any conclusions so buddha says now buddha says develop mindfulness of breathing when the mindfulness of breathing is developed and cultivated it's very fruitful and beneficial how is the mindfulness of breathing then here buddha talks about the way 16 different different ways so i am not hi- highlighting everything because then it will be a very long video you can read the entire discourse for example you know something like when i am breathing in heavily i know i am breathing in heavily breathing out heavily i am no i'm i know i am breathing out heavily when breathing in lightly i know i am breathing in lightly breathing out lightly i know i am breathing out lightly i breathe in experiencing the whole body i breathe out experiencing the whole body i breathe in stilling the physical processes i breathe out stilling the physical processes so there is this whole 16 ways of uh, where buddha is showing how you can meditate again this thing is very beautifully defined in a single sutta which is middle discourses 118 mn 118 uh, mindfulness of the full aware mindfulness of breathing the sutra on the full awareness of breathing anapansati sutta that sutta is uh, the, i i will be making that sutta, video on that sutta so you can also check that right 
uh, MN type MN118 in the search bar and you will get that video. Right? So then Buddha says that mindfulness of breathing when developed and cultivated is very fruitful and beneficial. So this is it. Right? So this is it. This discourse is it. I hope this uh, video was useful. It gave you some insight on the nature of elements and the various ways, various objects of our meditation depending upon what are the primary negative tendencies that we have. We can opt for those kind of meditations uh, to, to dedicatedly work on those qualities. Then about the mindfulness of breathing and uh, I hope this was useful. Do share your learnings and insights in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddha. Namo Buddha.